Please allow me to introduce our governor, former U.S. Congressman and governor since 2008. Governor Jindal created the first scholarship program for at-risk students in New Orleans and has been an advocate for charters and other innovative school choices that provide Louisiana students with higher levels of achievement. Under his leadership, the state has passed laws that will require annual teacher evaluations, incorporating student achievement and assign letter grades for school performance scores to increase accountability. Governor General has also supported efforts to increase career and post-secondary courses while in high school and transfer adult workforce training that have garnered national recognition for responsiveness and quality aimed at employees' needs. Please welcome to the podium, Governor of the State of Louisiana, the Honorable Bobby Jindal. Thank you all very much. Thank you. I want to start off by recognizing what a powerful video. I believe that is the first time that has been shown anywhere. These truly are some of the moms who have children in the scholarship program, some of the moms who want their children to be in the scholarship program. They're truly the reason why we're here today. Today should be a celebration of what we can achieve as a state if we give our children an educational system whose quality matches our expectations. I want to start off by thanking Representative Carter. I want to thank Chairman Carter for organizing this great day about education reform, for the incredible work of all the people who worked so hard to put this together. He's been working on this for weeks, for months. He's been a tireless advocate for bringing everybody together. Let's give Steve another round of applause for his great work. Two weeks ago, I laid out a plan for how we are going to create an educational system that meets the potential for every child to learn in Louisiana. That system is going to empower parents to make choices. That system is going to better meet the needs of our students. That system is finally going to reward our teachers for their incredible work. And that system is going to do something else. It's going to improve our quality of life. For our economy to continue to grow, for us to continue to attract new companies, we need to prepare our workforce for the jobs of the future. Education and our economy are uniquely linked. I'm proud of the fact we've outperformed the southern and national economies every month for the last four years. We did that in part by cutting taxes, revamping ethics, but if we want to continue to do that, we have to make education reform our top priority going into this legislative session, going into this new year. We need to graduate more students who are better prepared to go to college and enter the workforce. By doing this, we will be primed for rapid economic development, more business investment, more jobs for our people. By doing this, Louisiana will also see better health care outcomes, less juvenile crime, and lower incarceration rates. Indeed, whatever we care about, however we want to move Louisiana to the top of yet another good list, it all comes back to education. That's why education reform is so important. As you, know, as you however, know, our education system is not where it needs to be yet to give our children our better quality of life. Now look, we have certainly made progress. And we can stand up here and talk about the fact that retention rates, graduation rates are improving. Number of successful charter schools are increasing. Number of kids staying in school and graduating are also improving, and that's all great news. But let's also be honest. 44% of our schools now get Ds and Fs. You look at national tests like the NAEP, we're in the bottom five states in fourth and eighth grade math and reading. And I could go on and on about rankings, my point is this. We have made tremendous progress as a state for the last several years, but we've got a lot more work to do. Yes, we're moving in the right direction, but we've got to move with a greater sense of urgency and with greater speed. The reality is our children don't have time to wait. Our children only grow up once. They only have one chance to get a great education. We can't wait for another generation of students to graduate from high school unprepared for the workforce and higher education, or even worse, to drop out even before they graduate. The reality is there's no one silver bullet to educational reform. There's no one perfect school, one perfect teaching technique. There's no one-size-fits-all solution that was going to miraculously turn around our system tomorrow for our toddlers or our teenagers. And that's why the plan we presented is about taking the power out of the hands of bureaucrats and putting it in the hands of parents and teachers. We're going to accomplish this by doing three things. Number one, we've got to empower teachers. Number two, we've got to empower parents. And third, we've got to empower school leaders. Let me start with teachers. I've said this before and I will say this repeatedly. Our teachers are the backbone of our educational system. They are the heart and soul of what makes our schools run. We should be celebrating them, promoting them, telling them how much we appreciate their service. 
And I want to thank, we've got some legislators here that served these last four years together with us. They've done a great job over these last four years. We've taken steps to support our teachers. We instituted a teacher pay raise that brought the average salary up to the SRB average. We created a teacher's bill of rights and stronger discipline laws to support teachers in the classroom. We signed a law to prohibit teachers from completing duplicate burdensome paperwork to decrease the amount of time they spend on paperwork. We expanded the teacher advancement program. A teacher merit pay model shown to improve teacher effectiveness. One of only three states to have such an extensive program. We created a new value added evaluation system which actually evaluates teachers, principals, and superintendents on the one metric that matters, student achievement. Now certainly all of that is great progress. And I want to be the first to tell you we stand on the shoulders of those that came before us. Multiple governors, administrations, and legislators before us have worked hard to put in great found foundational blocks, building blocks, to recognize and reward our best teachers. We've got much, much more work to do. We've got these strong building blocks. We've now got more work to do to make sure that we've got a great teacher in every classroom and a strong leader in every school. Look, the honest truth is I wouldn't be here where I am today and none of us would be in this room today if it wasn't for our great teacher who at some point took an interest in us and made a difference in our education when we were growing up. I'm sure everybody here can remember that one teacher, that handful of teachers that truly changed your lives. But we also need to have an open and honest discussion about teacher quality in Louisiana. If we want to give every child a world-class education, we've got more work to do. The data show that a highly effective teacher can significantly change the academic prospects of a student or conversely can seriously derail them. And let me put it a different way. There was a pretty aggressive, there was a pretty provocative op-ed in the New York Times. Nick Kristof asked this question. He said, what should you do if your child's terrific fourth grade teacher decided to retire? His response, you should hold a bake sale. You should go door to door you should come up with a $100,000 bonus to get that teacher to stay. Now why? That sounds like a pretty outrageous thing for him to say. Well, the reality is the potential impact that that teacher will have on your child's future income far exceeds that sum. Unfortunately, the opposite is also true. Christoph says if it makes much more sense, it makes much more sense to pay a bad teacher a $100,000 buyout to get them to leave the classroom and to replace them with a merely average teacher. The average income loss, the future income loss for your child will be far greater if that poor teacher stays in that, te stays in that classroom. Now those numbers, they're purposely, I know he wrote that to get people's attention. Those numbers are, are fairly astounding. But they reveal the heart of new research recently released from a group of Harvard and Columbia professors. Now there was a lot of data that came out of that research, but here is one of the conclusions that jumped out at me. Having a good fourth grade teacher makes your student more likely go to go to college and less likely to become pregnant as a teenager later in life. I want you to think about that. Having a good fourth grade teacher makes your child more likely to go to college later in life, less likely to become pregnant as a teenager. I've got a fifth grade girl at home. I think I speak for a lot of parents when I'd say, we would do whatever it takes to make sure that they have those great teachers in fourth grade, fifth grade, whatever grade. This shows you how powerful, how important the impact is of having a great teacher in every classroom. The bottom line is the data show what we already know. Having a great teacher can change a child's life. Well, if, that, if we believe that to be true, wouldn't we design our systems to do everything we could to identify, recruit, retain, and compensate the best teachers in our classrooms? Unfortunately, our system today often does the opposite. It often crushes talented teachers and makes their jobs harder, not easier. For example, regardless whether you do a good job or a poor job, regardless whether you teach English or music, teach high poverty or middle class students, the current system treats everybody the same. This was confirmed recently by a report from a national educational organization about teacher quality in Louisiana. The National Council on Teacher Quality gave us a C- minus for teacher quality as a state. I don't know about you, but as a student, that's not a grade I would want to bring home to my parents. The study said that Louisiana doesn't do a good job of keeping effective teachers or removing ineffective teachers from the classroom. The report said that our current system focuses on seniority over effectiveness when determining personnel decisions. The report lays the blame on our current tenure system because it is hampering efforts to reward good teachers and improve schools. 
nationally. It says many states are creating systems where teachers are rewarded competitively, where performance is the name of the game, and where archaic restrictions like tenure are significantly reformed. Many states like Indiana, Florida, Tennessee, Illinois, and Michigan are moving towards performance-based personnel policies, including teacher evaluations, hiring and firing decisions, and tenure reform. That is the wave of the future. Louisiana cannot, must not be left behind. And that's why we're going to finally recognize great teachers, promoting this profession the way it should be and ensuring that every child has a high quality teacher. We're going to tie our certification system for teachers, principals, and superintendents to effectiveness. We're going to empower superintendents to be CEOs of their school districts and collaborate with their principals by taking school boards out of personnel decisions. We're going to empower districts to use compensation or recruit the staff they need and keep good teachers they have by giving them more flexibility to pay for things that matter, like performance, hard to staff subjects, high poverty schools, and core subjects. And we're going to tie tenure to effectiveness by removing it when a teacher is ineffective and granting it only when a teacher has been highly effective. I want to make one thing very clear about what this means for teachers. There are going to be those that like the status quo. The coalition for the status quo is going to say, my plan hurts teachers and it hurts public education. They're going to try to distort my plan. They're going to do whatever it takes to say reform is a bad idea. In other words, they're going to continue to argue for the status quo. The reality, though, is that union leaders are ignoring the needs of our great teachers across the state, and that should be offensive to our teachers. Union leaders don't want the excellent teachers in Louisiana to realize that the unions are ignoring their needs that our plan finally gives teachers the opportunity to be treated like professionals. Teaching is not only one of the most important professions in the world, it's also one of the toughest professions. And that's why we want to reward teachers for taking on this important role and to give them the tools to succeed and to help our children succeed. The second group of people that we need to empower is our parents. Every child deserves an equal opportunity in education. That sounds really good, by the way. You know, it's actually in the President's first official State of the Union address, he actually said something to that effect. I don't remember the exact words he used, but he basically said that a child's education, the quality of their education, shouldn't be dependent on their zip code, on their neighborhood, on their family's income. And here's an interesting thing. Governor McDonald gave the Republican response, and he said almost the exact same thing in his response as well. Without even looking at each other's speech, both of these national leaders used almost the same words to describe the same goal. And they were both exactly right. This shouldn't be a Republican issue or a Democratic issue. This should be an American issue. Every child deserves an equal opportunity in education. It sounds good. We should put it on a bumper sticker. But now we've got to make it a reality in Louisiana.